So someone wanted to know how we're going to tell the difference between catacil, which is cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy versus MS, which is multiple sclerosis. You can already tell there's going to be some overlap between these two conditions because it's cerebral and autosomal dominant means that's going to be in young people. So already there's going to be overlap with cerebral and young people with multiple sclerosis. And because these subacute infarcts and the leukoencephalopathy look like demyelinating white matter lesions on T2, you can see that catacil can be a mistaken for MS. So the fact that catacil and MS overlap is why it's important to know about a rare genetic condition that can be an MS mimic. And so catacil is autosomal dominant, which means it's a gene defect, most commonly the notch three in chromosome 19. And so testing for the hereditary genetic test in a targeted fashion for MS mimic or an atypical MS is how you make the diagnosis of catacil. Of course, because it's autosomal dominant, the family history is going to be very important. So if we have an autosomal dominant pedigree, then it's going to be a lot easier to make the diagnosis of catacil. However, some MS patients have family histories that are positive, even though MS doesn't have a gene and doesn't follow autosomal dominant. So you need to draw out the pedigree for autosomal dominant conditions, even though a negative family history doesn't exclude catacil. And it's an arteriopathy. So as opposed to multiple sclerosis, some of the imaging and clinical findings that we see in catacil represent that arteriopathy, which, is, which means from a symptom standpoint, migraine, and vascular type of headaches, as well as neurocognitive dis effects and neuropsychiatric effects, which represent encephalopathy, which are uncommon and late findings in multiple sclerosis, which is a white matter disease. And the imaging, the MRI, the subcortical uh, infarcts and leukoencephalomalacia, even though it looks like T2 hyperintensity, in catacel, but because it's a genetic disorder, often bilateral, symmetric, and involving a place where MS doesn't like to go usually, which is the temporal lobe. So when we're seeing bilateral, symmetric, diffuse, not um, relapsing and remitting, but a progressive course in a patient who has a family history, especially if it's an autosomal dominant type pedigree, even if it looks like MS superficially on the MRI scan and clinically, we got to think about the MS mimic. And that MS mimic is cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subacute infarcts and leukoencephalopathic uh, um, uh, findings clinically and leukodystrophy uh, like changes on T2 and MRI. And you're going to do the genetic testing, notch three, chromosome 19. There you go.